After 20 years in space, NASA's Cassini spacecraft is running out of fuel. And so, to protect moons of Saturn that could have conditions suitable for life, a spectacular end has been planned for this long-lived traveler from Earth. In the skies of Saturn, the journey ends as Cassini becomes part of the planet itself. My name is Linda Spilker. I am the Cassini Project Scientist. I've worked on Cassini for almost 30 years, and that's the time it takes Saturn to go around the Sun a single time. As Cassini Project Scientist, my role is to work with a team of about 300 scientists from around the world to plan the best possible science for Cassini to plan those science observations to look at Saturn or the rings or the icy moons, the magnetosphere, Titan, those kinds of objects, and to try and balance between the different science disciplines and find the best science possible. Right now, the Cassini spacecraft is in a set of orbits called the Grand Finale. Uh, what we did is use a Titan flyby to propel us all the way across Saturn's rings. And right now we're diving in between the gap between the rings and the planet. Flying in a place that no spacecraft has flown before. Getting back measurements in particular about the planet itself, revealing Saturn from the inside out, incredibly detailed pictures of Saturn's rings, and then sampling that region between the rings and the planet before Cassini's final plunge. And on the final plunge, what we'll be doing is getting a nudge from Titan. We call it Titan's Goodbye Kiss. It's a distant flyby about 120,000 kilometers. And that pushes us such that we actually go into Saturn's atmosphere. Our thrusters will be fighting against the atmosphere as we go in. We'll be sending back data till the very last second from our ion and neutral mass spectrometer, sampling, measuring the composition of Saturn's atmosphere directly. And once those tiny thrusters can no longer hold against the atmosphere, Cassini will begin to tumble, and very shortly thereafter, traveling at like 75,000 miles an hour, will burn up in the atmosphere of Saturn, be vaporized, basically, in Saturn's atmosphere. Probably some of the legacy science of Cassini involves two of its moons, Enceladus and Titan. Well, much to our surprise, this tiny moon Enceladus, only 300 miles across, bright white and icy, we expected it to be frozen solid. Instead, we found fractures at the South Pole. And out of these four fractures that we nicknamed tiger stripes, there were jets of material going out into space, water vapor and ice particles, and these contained a whole host of constituents, and Cassini could fly through that jet and taste what's coming out from those. It told us a lot about the subsurface ocean that's underneath Enceladus's icy crust. We found out it was salty. Uh, it had a pH very similar to the Earth. Uh, also, we found evidence of excess hydrogen and these tiny nanosilica grains that could only grow in very hot water, leading us to conclude that there's hydrothermal vents on the seafloor, on the rocky core of Enceladus. And we know on Earth that around these hydrothermal vents, you can get different kinds of life deep in the ocean in the Earth where no sunlight penetrates. So we wonder, could there be life on this tiny ocean world Enceladus? Then there's giant Titan, 10 times larger than Enceladus, thick atmosphere, thick nitrogen atmosphere, very similar to the Earth. We actually landed a European-built Huygens probe parachuted down through the thick atmosphere, landed on the surface of Titan, sent back pictures as it was landing, information about the atmosphere and about the surface as well. And what a surprise was in store because before all we could see was this hazy ball of Titan. And to penetrate through that haze, now we could see lakes and seas of liquid methane, river channels. Methane plays the role on Titan 
that water plays on the earth. We can have methane rain, methane flowing through the river channels, filling the lakes and seas. Uh, methane breaks apart in the upper atmosphere of Titan, forms these grains that fall down to the surface and possibly form the giant sand dunes that are around the equatorial region of Titan itself. Uh, so what an amazing uh, place to explore. Oh, I think one of my very favorite images is this montage of pictures. Uh, that's the backlit Saturn. Basically, Saturn is covering up the sun, and the sunlight is shining through all around the disk of Saturn. And all of the rings, the E-ring, the G-ring, the main rings themselves, are all glowing in this particular image. What's really special about it is that in this image as well is the Earth. Earth is there, and if you look carefully, you can see the Earth and the Moon. Mars and Venus are also part of this giant montage, and it sort of captures our place in the solar system to you know, be looking back at the Earth from Saturn a billion miles away and see essentially this pale blue dot, as Carl Sagan would say, where everyone you ever knew and everyone who has ever lived and, and ever died is on this pale blue dot. And that picture is really iconic. Oh, I think that'll be a very sad day. You know, I've worked on the mission for almost three decades, and to say goodbye to this uh, wonderful little spacecraft has returned so much information about the Saturn system, basically rewritten the textbooks about Saturn. But I think more importantly for me is going to be saying goodbye to my Cassini family. I've worked with so many of these people, we've gotten to know each other, our kids have grown up together, we've taken vacations together. And so, kind of as we all go our separate ways, that will be a sad goodbye as well. But in a certain sense, Cassini is both an ending and a beginning. Maybe kind of like a, a high school graduation. Everyone's been together, focused on the same goal, we've gotten there, and now maybe we're kind of like seeds, we're all going to go out work on other missions, take our knowledge, whether it's in science or engineering, and use it to for missions like Europa Clipper or Juno or Mars 2020, or missions that haven't even been started yet, to go forward and take those experiences and that knowledge on to uh, the next generation. <laughs>